All right, we're going to do a review of the Cartesian coordinate system, and actually that's graphing points and lines that can happen on a system. Here's the thing, we graph two variables, and we'll have the horizontal always be the x-axis, and the vertical always be the y-axis. And we're just going to go through and describe some of the terms that go with this. So like I said, x-axis is horizontal, and it goes on forever. y-axis is vertical. The scale I'll use is each tick mark will be 1. And we always have where we start, and that is always here in the center. And that is called the origin, which usually is marked with the letter O. And that origin is just, a, its base means home, so this is our origin, this is where we start. And any time we have a point, we use X and Y, any ordered pair is a point. And it's called an ordered pair because you have to have the horizontal component before the vertical. And in life, we use this as the independent variable, and this is the dependent variable. So anytime we have a point, we can plot it somewhere in these four areas or on the axis themselves. And these have names. We said this is the x-axis, this is the y. Inside the axis and not on them, here is quadrant one. And this is the most common quadrant that we like because Anytime we start from the origin, right and up are always positive. So here we have quadrant one. Now we start rotating counterclockwise. Over here is quadrant two. Down here is quadrant three. And finally we have quadrant four. And we like to use Roman numerals, it's just a notation thing. One, two, three, four. And if this is my origin and this is positive, so we have positive one on the x, two, three, four, five. If right is positive, we have to count negative the other way, two. Just like the number line for inequalities. Likewise on the y, going up is positive, going down is negative. Now, anytime we have a point, so if I want to say a point, 3 comma 2, and we'll use capital letters to identify points. Lines we'll use little letters later on, but capital letters. So I want to do point 3, 2. And again, an ordered pair is always x comma y. When x is equal to 3, y has to be 2. And I like to use run and rise versus run and jump. I use run and rise. So I run to 3 and I rise to 2. That is point A. Let's make point B negative 2, negative 4. I run to negative 2, and how do I rise? I rise 2 down to go negative, negative 4. And again, I can label it with the capital letter. So I have quadrant 1, quadrant 3. How about we do quadrant 4 next? So I need a positive x value. Let's go 1 or 5. Now let's do a negative y value, let's say negative 2. Run to 5, rise negative 2, down here. There is point C. And finally we'll put 1 in quadrant 2. Let's go negative 1. Now we need a positive y, let's say 4. Negative 1, 4. These are points inside the quadrants. A is in quadrant 1, D is in quadrant 2. B is in quadrant 3 and C is in quadrant 4. Now, if they're on the axes, point E, let's have it be 4, 0. Run to point 4, rise 0. 4, rise 0 is E. It is not in quadrant 4, it is not in quadrant 1, it is on the x axis. Point F, let's go 0, 4, because again, these are the two points that most often get confused. Run 0, so stay here, rise 4. And this is point F. You have to see the difference between E and F. That takes some practice, but it's always as an ordered pair, X comma Y. All right, you get to hear a little computer here going on in the background. But this is how we do points in a Cartesian coordinate system. We will quickly go eventually to equations like lines, 
like this, where a line will be denoted with a little letter, and we will have first order equations to deal with like this. For now, I want to do a quick review of the coordinate systems. We need to know the definition of the x-axis, the y-axis, all four quadrants, the origin, and understand how an ordered pair works with a rise or with a run and a rise.